Hi everyone, Lisa here from Forest City Stitching. I hope everyone had a good week. It's snowing a lot out right now, actually. We just got back from sledding. Um, yeah, yesterday was, I don't know, it was above freezing. Um, it was a fairly nice day. I actually um, did some tea dyeing of fabric and was able to hang them out on my back deck. Um, but good thing I didn't decide to do that today because um, yeah, we got a considerable amount of snow overnight and it's been snowing all day. So yeah, enough, as I said, um, for us to go tobogganing already. And, uh, yeah, so I guess winter is here again for my short little bit. I think it's supposed to warm up a little bit, um, uh, as the week progresses, but yeah, we've got some white stuff. Um, I hope, uh, everyone had a good week. Uh, nothing super, super exciting happened, um, except... On Monday, I did have the procedures to have tubes inserted into my ears. Um, I have noticed an improvement for sure. Right now, um, they feel a little bit full, but overall, um, I can definitely hear a lot better. And I didn't know my hearing was impacted as much as it was. Um, I don't my ears are not constantly crackling or popping and um yeah my furnace is really loud and my fridge is really loud my dishwasher is really loud um so I'm definitely noticing those things and as like on Monday I did notice a difference but I didn't know if it was that big of a difference but as the week has progressed I have definitely noticed a difference so I think it's for the best um yeah, I can yawn, I can chew without my ears popping and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I think it, it has definitely helped. I go back to the um, ENT December 8th uh, for another, for a hearing test and a checkup. Of course, when he went to insert the tubes, there were no, no fluid in my ears at all. Um, when I had seen him the Tuesday before, there were was fluid and so he's like are you sure you want me to pierce these perfectly good eardrums I'm like mm-hmm because I don't know what else to tell you because it definitely comes and goes and it's definitely a problem so yeah I'm I'm happy I got it done so it was very easy it was like maybe 15 minutes max um the procedure like no no pain afterwards i did take one advil like through like in the middle of the afternoon just because i was at work and i was just a little worried that when the freezing wore off that i was gonna have some discomfort but really nothing so yeah overall um that is considered a success i believe um got a good amount of stitching done i think so i have some stuff to show you for sure um, as I said, today I went tobogganing. Yesterday we didn't do too much. Uh, just a little bit of running around. I did get some haul from Michael's that I'll show you in a moment. And yeah, I guess a, a good week overall. So let's get to it. Um, so first of all, thank you to all my subscribers. Greatly appreciate your, your support. Um, I do apologize to... Um, Carol, who won my last giveaway, I haven't got that in the mail quite yet, um, but I did get an envelope to put it in the mail, so, <laughs> so hopefully uh, this week that will get out. And then also we had a giveaway, we had a giveaway for the, the Spring Bouquet Black Swallowtail. This is just the pattern and the leftover DMC and a couple of the, the six of the long beads that you need. Um, no perforated paper or anything like that and no other beads, um, but just a little bit of pasta stash um, that I had offered last week on my video. And the winner for that is Amy Senvia, S-E-N-I-V-A. Um, her comment was, butterflies are one of my favorite animals, along with giraffes and dolphins. Um, so, Amy, if you want to send me your address, I'll put my email address uh, below, and then I will get that out in the mail sometime. I will try to be more timely. 
I well I was out buying envelopes I did buy an envelope that that will work for as well so I'm already ahead of the game there um yeah so Amy sent me a message and thank you for those who left comments um greatly appreciate all the comments so excellent so haul let's start off with haul um I was able to go to my local LNS on Thursday to pick up a couple orders I had in and then I picked up just some more floss it was just floss just floss and Oh, I got all of this Crymic in here. And I'll show you the project of that um, after. Pick up that Crymic, some other floss, some sticky board. That was the first time I was in an, um, the store since like February. Um, so my local Nico Works store is Stitch It Central. And as I mentioned before, um, their daughter was killed in a tragic car accident um, probably about a month ago now. Um, quite sad and uh, yeah so so that was the first time me going in there since February and then since obviously the accident as well and uh, they are quite busy they were allowing four people in the store and they were literally keeping people out <laughs> so um, they were they were busy it was funny there is a gentleman in there just waiting for his wife and then um, when they're like they couldn't let any more people he's like Okay, I'm just gonna go wait in the truck. So he got the hint that maybe he should uh, skedaddle so someone else could come in. Um, but yeah, it was good. So I picked up, um, I had some floss um, listed on my phone, just a random um, fancy floss that I needed. I'm not sure what pattern's for, but I picked those all up. So hopefully I'll be able to figure out what patterns those are for. Um, but yeah, nothing too exciting to show you from that other than the, the chronic that I showed you. So then yesterday I was at Michael's. Um, they had 50% off Christmas items. So I did pick up this mailbox. So this is the one from Michael's. So it's different than the white one that is able, you're able to get at Hobby Lobby, but we don't have a Hobby Lobby. So, um, so this is what I'm hoping to do is maybe finish one of Priscilla's bigger Christmas um, projects on it. I'm just looking around, I'm like, maybe I have a nail in here I could hang in on to for right now, but I don't think I do. So I picked that up, so that was 50% off. I was waiting for it to be on sale. Um, they only had these ones left at that location that I went to, so I picked up that one. Again, Papa finishing in the back. So now I have three different ones of these. Again, 50% off. I've been eyeing up this frame, but I wasn't paying the full price for it. It was on sale for $15. Yeah. I like it because it has the... I just noticed now there's a little bit of paint missing from that. See, those little things bother me, especially when you pay so much money for something. But I could always repaint it or something. Right? Right. And I'm not using it right this very moment anyway, so I can fix it when the time comes. So that's my main exciting haul that I got for finishing items. I don't think I finished anything this week, so. We don't have that to talk about, but um, I'm just trying to think about, because I did have, oh, one other thing I can show you for haul, sorry I'm all scattered, is that I got my Christmas Carol book for the Stitching Book Co. I think that starts December 5th, and I picked up the DMC at Michael's as well. And then I just had this oatmeal 14 count Ada, so that's what I'm going to use for it. So this is actually one inch bigger all around than what we need. So it's not going to be a big piece. I'm interested to see. That's 
that. That's all ready to go. Um, let's do whips. And then um, Stacy from 91 Stitching um, had asked about Jen Lee's planner. So Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches, she came up with her 2021 20, planner yesterday uh, in her, available in her Etsy shop. And so I posted in Stacey's group saying, hey, this is out. It looks amazing. Um, I did buy it last year. I was using it last year uh, or this year, I should say. Um, and then so Stacy was just curious about how I use it. Um, wondering if I could do a little bit of a flip through. Um, so I will. Um, do I use it to its full potential? Absolutely not. Um, but I'm hoping 2021 will be better, right? We always hope each year is better. So after my whips, I am going to go through that. So first, I think I worked on probably Baby Yoda. I'm not going to show the pattern just because it was just, it's just the pattern that I got off of Pinterest. how he's coming along so I worked on him during the zoom meeting um with the 911 stitching group on Wednesday there's a zoom meeting going on right now so if I get this wrapped up then hopefully I'll be able to hop on if everyone is still cooperating in the house my husband has to go to work uh later tonight so that's why I'm filming a little bit earlier than usual so that's baby Yoda and then I also worked, I started Shimmer by Carolyn Manning. And that's what I need the Krynic for. And this is for the Carolyn Manning Sal with I'm Stitching 91 Facebooker. And I got some pretty good progress on that. So that's that whole tree, or the whole, yeah, the whole branches of the tree, I guess. And the next are going to be some ornaments. That helps at all. So this is the first time I've used Krynic. Um, this is a 14 count Fortnite fabric that I won during an auction. And as I showed before, that's all the Krynic. It uses like a Krynic. You go through quickly, I've noticed. So this is what I've used so far. I feel like I used a lot of it. That was just for the center tree. So it was one strand of this with some DMC. I feel like this has already depleted the spool a lot, so just for the center. But yeah, no, I'm happy with that. It was it's stitching up pretty quickly. Next is Dairy Darling by Little House New Works. And so I'm doing this one as a gift for my mom. I'm changing the cow to a black and white cow, a Holstein. Because that's what we had in our dairy farm. So pretty much got her done. I was hoping to get this done this week, but I don't know. Maybe. There's still time today, right? Alright, and then I work on throwing stuff around. I worked on Snow Village, and I worked on nope. Oh, here it is. Put it on the other side. This snowflakes for sale stand. Sorry about the glare. Put 
Um, and it was for a challenge and a chance to just for stitch on something on white. So I worked. Mainly I finished up the white there and then started the snowman there. So that's what I did on that one. And then for Baby Yoda, that was a challenge. It was stitch on something. This, so our, our movie this month is Ratatouille. And I haven't rewatched it yet. I usually rewatch it with each when we, at the beginning of each month, but we, I haven't got around to it this month. And so, I guess there's talk of someone goes to prison or makes up something about whoever goes to prison. Again, I haven't watched the movie in a while. Um, and so it was to search on something that you think would be the reason why someone would go to prison. So I said, well, Baby Yoda probably would do something to make someone go to prison. So that's why I picked him. Um, and then Dairy Darlings I chose because the one prompt was to turn something that was a secret. So it was for again. And then the next one I worked on was Jack Frost Tree Farm. And this one was stitch on something you are changing. I just worked a little bit there on on the house um but i'm going to be changing it to say to get frost and just jack's tree from that'll be my sense and then also some of the smaller ones where it says um like the tree's names i am just going to put a snowflake where where those words are in those sections too So then, um, as far as plans go, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Enchanted Stitches this week. I don't think I got to anything for Magical Stitches. Again, I'm kind of weaning out Magical Stitches because I'm not going to be participating in that next year. Um, yeah. So yeah, no finishes, I don't think, this, this week. Um, plans, I do need to start. My son has decided that he would like me to make ornaments for his teachers. First, he said, I want you to make snowman or no Santa's. I'm like, how big? Um, and then I said, well, what if I did like the letter of his teacher's name? The thing is, he has one teacher, two ECEs in his class, and then he also wants his gym teacher to have one and then he has two people in program so that's six so i need to do an s for miss strickland a w for miss ray a k for miss k an M for Miss Manius, and then his program teachers are Honey and Gata. So an H and a G. So at least I'm going to be doing different ones. So I'm going to do them on 22 count, like I did the initials I did for our Christmas tree. Um, and so I dyed some, that's why I was dying for breakfast yesterday. So, it's hard to see if I double it up. So I tea dyed this fabric. Now, it got really orangey in spots. So it must have been sitting on a tea bag in that spot. So I had it figured out. That's the darker part. So this side looks darker, it's harder to say. So I think I'm gonna use this side. And I think I'm going to kind of like, because I don't need very much 
right, work my way around and use the spots I need. And then I'll still have a good chunk down here for something else, if that makes any sense. So that's what that is for. So I need to get started on that. I still have the floss in here from when I did mine in Jolly July. And then I found these at the dollar store. So I thought, oh, and there's six. Perfect. In my head, I only needed to do five, but I think that's because I had five until he told me he wanted one for Miss Manius too. So I think the little square that I'll work it to be will fit on there. I think that should be fine. So that's what I need to get done for Christmas gifts. All right, so moving on to my planner flip through. So it's kind of hard to flip through, but I did move all my old pages out. So I did move my old pages out, so I can kind of show what I did on my old pages. So what I bought from Jen Lee this year was the, so you just print the, do the print out. So this is the binder that I used last year. So I've already kind of converted it back over to 2021. So it was like a hundred and something pages for just the planner itself. So I called my husband and I'm like, if I send you something, can you just print it for me at work? And then we'll buy work some paper. Um, so he did. And then I also bought the add-on pack, which was an inventory list. Um, so she did a really good job of that, of, um, inventory list for your patterns by, um, designer name. So it's alphabetical, um, floss. So all the numbers of the DMC floss, all the fancy flosses. Um, yeah, I'll show you that as well. So she did a really good job of that. Um, she did make some changes to the planner um, from last year to this year. The one thing that she didn't include in this year's planner that I did use last year was a weekly kind of calendar. But I think I can use another section for what I use that for because I didn't really do that well anyway. So, so I'll kind of do a flip through. through. Um, what I do and how I kind of have my binder set up. So I have it by month, but then also at the front I put in. So there's this yearly habit tracker that she made, which I really like. And so you can just like add in like what days you did stitching. Um, just like check that off and then you can have a total of days. She also included a blank one that doesn't have anything to do with cross stitch at all of this um, in this planner, which I think I might try to use for my running as well. So, so I like the idea of that. Um, she included this. Now this was in last year's and I didn't do it, but I might try to. This is, um, someone was referring to it as like alphabet soup. So it's a year long challenge where you try to finish a project connecting with either 12 or 24 letters of the alphabet or all 26, who knows? Um, so that's that. She just has a monthly like focus tracker. Um, so then as far as the months go, I just, if I take this out, it's going to be hard for me to get back in. So each month, I'll just show you what each month looks like. So there's just this, um, one sheet that kind of goes over. Now she had, it comes in a different, in a different sequence than I put them in, in my binder. Um, so this one here is what I started with for the month and it's like goals of the month, um, uh, dates that you need to remember, plan starts. She has a section for expenses. So you can fill that out how you want. 
And then she just has a blank calendar. So I find that blank calendar very helpful during Mania or Jolly July. To show you. I'm not going to show you this, but then she has the acrostic that she does, that she puts out on her Facebook page each month. Um, this one has, she's given two options each month. So that's different. Then she also includes the January holidays. Um, so that's also something that is available on her Facebook page as well, where you, for example, like January 1st is National Hangover Day. So you could stitch a piece that corresponds with that, right? So it's just all these different challenges. Um, so then she also, this is what I think I'm going to use instead of the weekly um, sheet to this to-do list. So what I was using the weekly sheet for was um, like what I was going to do for each hand stitches and things like that. Um, again, I'll color, I will kind of go over what I, I did last year. Again, it wasn't great, but it gives you an idea. So I think I could use this for tasks for the month. I could take a look at what the challenges are and kind of just use this to jot it down. And then um, this one, she's just calling an extra. So again, you can also mark here what days you stitched. Uh, it gives you another section for um you know a new philosopher a new designer a new stitchy friend a new shop like different things that you could who might want to note and so that would be helpful to um possibly floss tubers like myself if there was something i wanted to chat about uh, what does this say well it looks like she's also included a quote Oh, so bonus stitching connection. So she has a little quote and then it, she says, um, pick a project that connects with that. So like so many different challenges <laughs> that you could connect your stitching with. So lots of ways to be motivated. Um, and then there's just a reflections page. I'll say, I didn't do anything with this last year. Maybe I will this year. And then this is just a notes section. So that's how we have each month set up. Um, I'll take you to December. I'm going to hide something. Because there's a little note on here about someone that might watch this. So. because I don't think I did. Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you November. Do I think I can actually get November out of here without causing too much problem? So November, for example, this is what I used this page for for this year. So this is last 2020's calendar or planner. So for goals of the month, I wanted to finish Chicken Joy so I could put that up. So I did that. And then we had this Carolyn Manning style. So I had that listed there. I hadn't been using that section for new starts, but you know, maybe I will. Or I'll show you something later, or like for the upcoming calendar or planner. And then, so for example, you see in this page, so this is the acrostic from this year's calendar for November. And then this was the weekly plan slash recap that I was using for 2020. So you can buy an add-on with like more calendar packs. That's an option. So you can get this for the 2021. Um, I was just listing, listing um, what I was gonna do the challenges for. So as you can see, I wasn't taking full advantage of that. So that's those. Um, yeah. Then we go to, so then I put the new November in behind. So you were, I already went through what a typical month looks like for that. What I will show you is May. May is a good example. 
beautiful. So this is what my calendar looked like for Mania last year. So I put this in, I've left this in my planner so I can refer back to it. I have already looked at my calendar for May next year already and kind of just penciled in what I'm pretty sure won't be done. So what my plan is for Mania this year is that I am going to work on those projects that I worked on in Mania last year that aren't done on the days that I worked on them the year prior, if that makes any sense. And then I'll have a better idea come May if there's anything else to be added to this and then anything else can be a new start. So that's my plan for Mania. And then I've also done the same for July. So for example, there's my Jolly July calendar from this year. And then this is what I have already penciled in. I, I don't, I haven't held much hope of me finishing much more for Jolly July, as you could tell. I'm a little bit more optimistic about what I started on Mania. Okay, so that's that. So those are all the monthly sections. How, um, let me just get this out of the way. How I use the monthly sections. And of course, you know, I'd like to get better at it. And use it more effectively. But there's a lot of different options for sure. Okay, so again, I don't think I'm going to take this stuff out just because I don't think I need to get back in. So then she had also in last year's planner included like a whip list. That was the inventory sheets falling out because they're not in there yet. Um, the whip list. So you're just kind of able to print as many as you needed, right? Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> we'll see how messed up these are. You. Oh, look at that. It's not too bad. Put those over there. You will see those in a moment. <laughs> so, yeah, so those are the whip lists that I found very helpful. So I have all those. And then I created, then I had a, just to keep things straight. So the whip list, you could do your pattern designer, fabric shirt, and finish. Is what those show. And then so I also did one specific for Mania. And then one for Jolly July as well. So that was helpful. So that's for the whips. So in this year's planner, she has included, and the good thing with the PDFs, like if you need more than one sheet of anything, you can print another one. If you screw up, you can just print another one. I've already had to print a couple more of the um, calendars for, um, May and July because I already screwed it up when I was um, planning ahead. Um, so for this, for this calendar year, so 2021, the upcoming calendar year, um, in that planner, she included one that was just titled 2021 whips. So what I'm going to do is print off whatever I need this will be a December project. Um, and then transfer whatever still are whips on my old whip sheets onto this. Okay, if that makes sense. And then she also included a bunch of sheets for new starts. So that's how I'm going to use those. And then what I really like are the inventory sheets. She 
added because I had used some of the extra sheets to track like um, different patterns I wanted or fabric I had and now I can kind of transfer them to other other sheets in the new planner so um, she also included some marathon planning pages I don't necessarily participate in the marathons like I would like so I don't really use that she has another list of that you can use for all whips like she just has so many different options um so she has a reference page of what the acronyms stand for in cross stitch um some other blank pages as i mentioned she just did a blank calendar a blank habit tracker that i said i'm going to use for help track my running um yeah and just some different blank pages. So that's the basic calendar for 2021. And so that gives you an idea of how I've used it in the years past and kind of what I'm planning on doing this year. So I hope that kind of helps anyone that might have any questions. This is a rough copy of a whip go board because I kind of, I want to do whip go this year. Like I have this tag that just keeps falling out of this Swallowing it three times. Um, the binder. Um, yeah, I want to participate in Whipgo this year. So I just did a, a little preliminary Whipgo board. All right. So next is the even. I think I got rid of the sheet, but this is the inventory pack, extra pack. Um, yeah, it's very comprehensive. So first is a section for fabric inventory. So it just gives you this like spreadsheet that you can track your fabric. So fabric count, color, cut, possible projects, any notes you have, that's helpful. And then we have a pattern inventory. So let me show you, we started. Yes, because I wanted to look for what I have for stitching for the housewives. So the alphabet along the side, because I'm like, how come there's so many of these sheets? But she did a sheet for each letter. Smart. Um, so I started filling out this one for the patterns I have for stitching with housewives, because also in my plans, I want to because their housewives are doing jolly housewives for december yes so which i think that means they're stitching on their own christmas designs i don't know how i'm going to do just christmas but i'm going to try to do most of the stitching with the housewives patterns so i wanted to have an idea of what i had for their their patterns um this is not including any of the whips i have these are just other patterns that i have so you have pattern, designer, stitch count, call for fabric, and then floss notes. So, yeah. So that gives you an idea of what the pattern inventories look like. So that's like a nice little project. Next is floss inventory. So there's just like a blank sheet. So you can put whatever floss you want on there. And then she has DMC. I'll just show you like one page. But like, look at already all the DMC numbers are on there. And then, so she also has it for, yeah, that's just DMC that all those pages. She also has it for classic color works. That just gives you an idea there. And then for danced. And for NPI. I don't have any NPI, but so I'll probably just get rid of these sheets. That's fine. And then weeks I works. 
so when I saw that she had all of those listed, I was like, um, yeah, 100% getting that. So that is what the planner and the inventory add-on looks like. Um, so she had a few other add-ons. I glanced at them, but it didn't look like there was anything I like desperately needed for the add-ons. I think one was like about stitchy friends. One was um, more calendar, so like a weekly calendar. And then one was, I want to say there was one other one, but I can't remember exactly what that one included. But check out her Etsy page. She does a great job of explaining and showing examples of what each of the um, pages are. And uh, yeah, she's done a really good job. Her attention to detail is superb. Um, and she's just a very highly organized individual. So um, if I can be even partly more organized next year, then that would be great. So yeah, I hope that helps anyone that was wondering how someone may use it or what it looks like. Um, again, I'm definitely not using it to the full potential, um, but gives you an idea how you can use it. Yeah, so definitely go check that out. Yeah, so then for upcoming plans for me, what are we? We still have a week, week and a day in November. Um, don't know what Enchanted Stitches looks like for next week yet. I should start on those Christmas ornaments for my son's teachers. Um, yeah, that's all I can really think of for upcoming plans for sure. Um, yeah, so I hope uh, you found this video helpful. And uh, if you have any questions about the planner, let me know. I'm by no means an expert, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone has a good week coming up. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else for me more to say. Um, yeah, have a good week. Stay safe, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the U.S. with that upcoming. Um, I know it's going to be different, and I know that people aren't going to want to miss seeing their family, but my personal opinion in the grand scheme of things, it's probably better than the not to, you know, tone down things than you usually would, but um, I just hope everyone is careful with whatever they do plan to do. Um, so have a, have a good week, everyone. Bye.